Nah, fuck it. We'll leave the cough in because it's all natural, baby. You know it. <laughs> What's up, guys? Fabio here once again, and I want to welcome everybody back to another video. And today I'm coming at you with another page request. Doing something a little bit different. Um, this is a, another wrestling video. But uh, Clarson, I hope I said that right, right? Clarson or Clarson. Either way, I think it's Clarson. Uh, Clarson wanted me to give my thoughts on John Cena and how he heavily contributed to WWE's decline and also explain what went, what went wrong with his push. And I think I can I can do all that in the course of a video. So um, I mean, you guys, you guys know my thoughts on on John Cena, and uh, you know I've never done a video for it, but hey, it's for a paid request, might as well. So before we go any further, if anyone would like to help contribute to the channel by sending in a paid request like this, you may do so down below in the description box. There is a link to my PayPal account. No amount is too big. No amount is too small. It does not have to be just a movie review. It could be a TV series or a cartoon, comic book, video game, uh, you know, wrestling like this. I should probably start including that in the intro. Um, you know, random thoughts and rants and streams and commentaries and anything in between. It does not, again, have to be just a movie review. <clears throat> the sky's kind of the limit when it comes to the page requests. Um, you know, but for those that have sent them in before, thank you. I greatly appreciate it. It means you guys actually care about what I say and do here on the channel and you want to see me try some different things. And it does motivate me to keep wanting to make videos, so it's a win-win for everybody. You guys get more of the type of videos that you want to see, and I keep making them. So everyone's happy at the end of the day. So thank you. But John fucking Cena. Fucking John Cena. Whatever you want to say. Fuck John Cena, first of all. I have never really been a fan of Cena. I mean, when he first started doing the Doctor of Thugonomics, that was okay. I didn't mind that. But then when they started pushing him to be the next big thing, I didn't give a fuck. And then especially when he, you know, when he came over to Raw and, you know, you can't see me and all that. It's, I didn't give a fuck about Cena. I never really did. Unfortunately, I own a couple of his movies. Um, I might as well get that out of the way before we get into the wrestling stuff. He's a shitty actor. He has no fucking charisma. The only movie where he was remotely good was Blockers, and I think that that is because he had a really strong supporting cast with him. But, um, you know, movies like The Marine, I have that because I like Robert Patrick as the villain. 12 Rounds is okay, even though it's Die Hard 3, and it's directed by the guy that did Die Hard 2. Ready, Harlan, excuse me. And then pretty much all of his other movies, I've never seen. You know, I, I try to give him a chance. I'm like, well, okay, maybe he's a better actor than he is a wrestler. And yeah, that didn't fucking work. It didn't work with Cena. Because he's a shitty fucking wrestler and he's a shitty fucking actor. Again, the only, the only movie that I remotely like him in is Blockers. Other than that, I know Peacemaker... Everyone loved Peacemaker because they got the goofy fucking dance sequence in the beginning and everything. I don't give a shit about that. I don't care. Fuck John Cena as an actor. And also, fuck him as a wrestler. But back into the main topic of the video, my thoughts on him. I was never a fan of him as a wrestler. Um, when he blew up really big, I was 13 at the time. I was a teenager. So I was, you know... um well versed in Cena because everybody was wearing a fucking John Cena t-shirt and they had the spinner belt. We had the toy version of the spinner belt. I think we gave it to one of my cousins because she wanted it for whatever reason. And, you know, 
his fucking theme song. I, you know, his theme song's okay, but that's about it. You know, dun, 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 dun. it is annoying though. After a while, fuck John Cena. So I knew exactly what was going on the whole time. You know, he blew up really big, and it was it was annoying then. And what, 14, 16 years later, seventeen years later, it's still fucking annoying. I I hate it. I do. Me and my brother, we've been watching a lot of the that era, like. 2005 to 2007 we've been watching a lot of that stuff lately and john cena is all over the fucking place there and it's really annoying but i've never been a fan of him as a wrestler when he first came out when he first debuted in wwe he was another generic fucking wrestler a lot of people forget about this or they don't know but he was another generic wrestler i think he wore red all the time and you know him and Randy Orton, I think, had a very similar beginning, and then they went off on their own paths. But he was just your generic wrestler coming out in boots and trunks and had nothing special about him. And then when they, for whatever reason, I guess because 8 Mile had just come out when he debuted in the company in 2002, and they wanted, they basically made him Eminem as a rapper. So there you go. And I didn't, you know, in the beginning, it's like, okay, this is something different. Even though, I mean, even if you go back to the to the 90s, PG-13, for the five people that remember them, PG-13 kind of had the Vanilla Ice thing going on. I mean, even Scotty Tuhati, you know, kind of had that going. But it worked for Cena. And they just pushed the ever-living shit out of Cena. And like I said, me and my brother, we've been watching a lot of those older, like, 05, 06 pay-per-views and stuff. And even then, even if you go back to WrestleMania 21, when he won the, the WWE, or the, yeah, the WWE Championship, nobody gave a fuck. Even back then, because when he won, when he beat JBL, who's another wrestler I don't fucking care about, I mean, yeah, people cheered, but... They didn't blow up as much as they think that they were going to. They in WWE. I mean, people cheered more for Batista when he won the World Heavyweight title at the same pay-per-view. And I'm not really a fan of Batista. He's another fucking wrestler that I don't like. Because he didn't want to learn. He didn't want to get better. He just wanted to come out and... <laughs> and, you know, he couldn't really work. Because, like I said... Even in that WrestleMania 21 match, he tr there's one spot, and they left it in on the DVD. He tries to lift up Triple H for, like, a, a power slam or, like, the Batista bomb or whatever, and he couldn't do it. He couldn't get him up all the way, and, he, and Triple H just kind of fell and made it look like he was doing something. You know, Batista was something when he was on steroids. He's not on fucking steroids anymore. So there you go. But... Never was a fan of Batista either, to be honest. Overrated as fuck. Same with Cena. But even then, people were not happy with Cena. A lot of those pay-per-views, a lot of those Raws, you know, let's go Cena, Cena sucks. Let's go Cena, Cena sucks. The best one was, of course, ECW One Night Stand 2006 when he got booed the entire time. And he tried to throw his t-shirt into the crowd and everyone threw it back and they said, fuck you, Cena, and Cena swallows. That is the best. I don't give a shit. That is the best fucking John Cena match. Because Rob Van Dam kicked the shit out of him in the match and the crowd ate it up and shit all over him. And it's fucking awesome. It's here on YouTube for those that don't have the pay-per-view, but the whole pay-per-view was good. But if you want to see just that, it's here on YouTube. So people weren't sold on Cena, and I don't know why they pushed him, well, I, I do know why they pushed him, so at that time, people were tired of Triple H, that was, you know, around that time was the so-called Triple H's reign of terror, as a lot of people calls it, because, you know, The Rock left, Stone Cold left, and Triple H was really the only main event guy that was there, everyone else, they either didn't want to elevate, 
or for whatever reason they buried him, like Booker T. We all know the WrestleMania 19 fiasco. So, again, they needed somebody new, so we got fucking John Cena and Batista. Those were the new guys at the time. But there was plenty of other, you know, wrestlers around that time. You know, I know Chris Jericho was on his way out then, but Chris Jericho, I know him and Cena, I think that was his last feud before he left the company was Cena. You could have did a little bit more there. I mean, how many times did Cena bury Edge? I mean, they had the mat, you know, Cena lost the title for the first time to Edge at the Elimination Chamber, which we ju I just did a commentary for that. And then he won it back on Raw like two weeks later, or at the Royal Rumble three weeks later. And then the second time he beat him, he beat him in a TLC match, you know, the match Edge never lost, in Toronto, in his hometown. Because, you know, Cena, Super Cena. You know, he could have worked with Christian, and they could have traded the belt back and forth. He could have worked, you know. Uh, I did hear that Shawn Michaels was supposed to beat him, and I love Shawn Michaels. Shawn Michaels has always been one of my favorite wrestlers. He Shawn Michaels was supposed to beat him, I think, right after WrestleMania 23. I think that match that they had on Raw that was like an hour. I think Shawn was supposed to beat him, but Shawn said, no, I don't want to. I was like, come on, man. Fuck Cena. Triple H was supposed to beat him, but it never happened. You know, I would have been okay with that, to be honest. You know, and I, I like Triple H, but the reign of, like, the, from 2002 to 2006, when he was the top guy on Raw consistently, it got old after a while. I'm not going to lie. It got old. So they didn't have anybody. So they got fucking Cena. And like I said, people got tired of it then. People didn't want to see it then because people knew exactly what was going to happen. Now, what, what pisses me off more is all these people want to suck Hulk Hogan's dick. Oh, my God. Hogan was great in the 80s and, and the early 90s. And Hogan was the fucking best. And, you know, if it wasn't for him, wrestling wouldn't be where it was at. That's partially true. It wasn't people real, don't realize it was not just Hulk Hogan that made wrestling what it was. It was Macho Man. And if you look at the other company, NWA, it was Flair, and it was Sting, and it was Lex Luger, and it was the Road Warriors. It was Dusty Rhodes. It was all the different characters. It wasn't just one fucking guy. But that's the way the history is. But everyone wants to fucking suck Hogan's dick and shove their dick up Hogan's ass and... You know, then they want to bitch about fucking Cena. They're the same goddamn wrestler. It's the same shit, different decade. So people were tired of it then. And people, you know, I know, I don't know what his status is. I don't know if he's like a part-timer, like Brock Lesnar or whatever. I don't really fucking give a shit. But when he was consistent, you know, when he was the top guy, I hated it. And I still fucking hate it. Again, watching... These pay-per-views, especially when they would do a SmackDown pay-per-view, because me and my brother watched, um, it's over there, but I don't want to get up and, and check. It was one of the SmackDown pay-per-views when they still did the branded pay-per-views. And Cena was in the fucking main event, and he was on Raw at the time. Why? They did this bullshit SmackDown versus Raw tag match, where it was him and Batista versus, um... Booker T and I think Finley. Yeah, it was Finley. And it was the SmackDown versus Raw tag match. And, and people were not excited when fucking Cena came out. Nobody gave a shit. I don't give a shit. But, you know, I'm sure he made WWE, he made Vince a shit ton of money over the years. Not probably as much as Austin or, or even Hogan, but. People didn't like it because people saw through it. He wasn't that good of a wrestler. He's got, what, five moves like Kevin Nash, and that includes the hair whip? Oh, wait, Cena doesn't have long hair. His After he stopped doing the Doctor of Thugonomics when he just spoke normally, his promos weren't good. His promos were as generic as you could fucking get. 
and him, you know, doing the Marine salute. You're not, you were never a fucking Marine. I was never a Marine either. I was Army. I don't really like Marines. I'm going to be fucking honest. I don't really like Marines. I definitely don't fucking like John Cena. But he was not that good of a wrestler. All his matches are the same. His best matches is because of the other person involved. Again, Rob Van Dam. Rob Van Dam made John Cena look way better than he should have. Shawn Michaels made John Cena look way better than he should have. That bullshit fucking WrestleMania match that he had with Undertaker that was a minute. Undertaker made him look better than anybody. Undertaker could wrestle a fucking broom and it would look good. But when you're in every goddamn main event of a pay-per-view and you're on Raw and you're on SmackDown, which is not your show, every week people got tired of it. People did not want to fucking see it. So, fuck John Cena. And, you know, again, he's in that Hulk Hogan class where people, you know, people got tired of Hogan as, as much as people don't want to believe it, but they're the same wrestler. I don't know why people deny fucking reality. It really pisses me off. And you know what? I used to be a Hulk Hogan fan when I was a kid. Now, not so much. Why? He's a shitty fucking wrestler and he's a shitty human being. Fuck Hulk Hogan. In the words of Iron Sheik, And I know what people were thinking, well, it was the same thing with Stone Cold. It really wasn't, because Stone Cold, his character represented every, you know, blue-collar guy out there working a job. They hate their fucking boss. They want to kick the shit out of their boss. That's who Stone Cold represented. And Stone Cold, not the most technical wrestler in the world. Stone Cold Steve Austin will be the first person to tell you that. But his matches were way better. His storytelling was way better. His promos are still fucking legendary. And they actually did shit with the character. Now, I do think it went on a little too long. But that's because he got injured. You know, once you get to like 99 and 2000, I know he, he fucked his knees up and everything. And he was out for a while. And they were trying to keep that train going. I get that. But... WrestleMania 17, I love the match that he has with The Rock, but the ending fucking blows where him and Vince McMahon are hugging in the ring and drinking a beer. That was completely fucking unnecessary. You didn't need that. It was stupid. It was stupid 20 years ago. It's still fucking stupid. Because people didn't want to see that. And then it kind of killed Stone Cold because after that, what did Stone Cold really do that, that was worth the shit? Nothing. When they made him funny, I did like some of that stuff. It's good comedy, but that was kind of the end of Stone Cold. No one can stay on the top forever. And I know other people say, well, what about The Rock? Again, The Rock can, as much as I don't like The Rock personally, Dwayne Johnson became a fucking bitch. I'm going to say that right here. He did. In the ring, you know, I just watched WrestleMania 20 for a commentary. He can out-wrestle Cena any fucking day of the week and twice on Sundays. And that feud was fucking bullshit because the first match was the only match that we're ever going to do. And then next year they had another fucking match. And it's like, you are fucking full of shit. You are full of shit, Vince McMahon. You are full of shit, WWE. Anything they tell you is full of shit. You know, Randy Orton, the first undisputed champion in wrestling. Chris Jericho was the first undisputed champion. SmackDown on uh, Thursdays for the first time ever. SmackDown was on Thursdays for, what, the first four years that it was in existence? From, like, 99 to 2004? Five years? And then it went to Friday? You're all full of shit. And the fan... And, and what really upsets me is they act like that the fan... They, they act like... The fans, and this goes with Cena, they act like the fans are stupid. They act like people don't understand wrestling, that people don't watch wrestling. And this is why people like me don't fucking watch it anymore. Because they lie to you, and they think that you're fucking stupid, and you're beneath them. And again, that's why people like me don't fucking watch it anymore. <laughs> But back to The Rock. For the, the Rock can actually fucking wrestle. The Rock could actually do a promo. The Rock was an interesting character, and they changed it. He went from being a bad guy to being, I'm The Rock, 
fuck all of you, you're all beneath me, and then he was a good guy, and then he was a bad guy again. Cena was just consistently a fucking good guy, like Hogan. And, you know, the, the third part, I'll jump to the third part before we get to the second part, but the third part was, you know, what went wrong with his, his, uh, his booking or his, you know, his run or whatever. <laughs> Not doing anything with him. It was the same shit. Okay, I'm John Cena, and I'm going to wrestle whoever. I'm going to wrestle Edge. Okay, Edge beat me. Edge beat me for the belt. I got to get back at Edge. Oh, well, we'll do it in a TLC match, because that's Edge's match. A match that Edge never lost, and then he loses. And then they never fucking work together again. And I don't think Edge, Adam Copeland ever talks about Cena. I don't think he likes John Cena because of that. Because you never hear him talk. No one ever brings that up. No one's like, well, what was it like with Cena? No one ever, I have never heard a single person mention John Cena and Edge together. I don't think he likes them. I don't blame him. I really don't blame him. And then, oh my god, Umaga. Umaga is this monster, undefeated wrestling machine. But Cena can beat him. And Cena can beat this guy. And Cena can be that guy. And they made it like a, a fucking Superman comic. Where only Superman can beat this guy. And people saw right through it. It was fucking paper thin. And people didn't care. And then the biggest fuck up that they did at least in my opinion, was when they did the NXT thing, when NXT first came out, and it looked like that Cena was going to turn heel and join NXT. He should have. After that, I gave the fuck up. I stopped watching wrestling. That's when I gave up. In 2010, when they did that, I turned the television off. I said, I am never watching a fucking episode of, of WWE ever again. The whole corner over here, you can't see it because it's behind the behind the laptop. The whole corner is nothing but fucking wrestling DVDs. I'll watch that. Now, I got shit that came out after 2010, but it's because I found it cheap. And I'm like, okay, maybe I'll give it a shot. And if I don't like it, I can trade it in. But I gave the fuck up because that is where they really fucked up. They should have made Cena a heel again. And then, there you go. And then a couple years ago, when he came out, like the NWO, that was dumb. It's all fucking dumb. And again, people, oh man, it was so good. No, you're just, another thing that really ups, bothers me is people that just think because it's WWE, it's automatically going to be good. It's not. Or people that bitch about WWE, but then they don't want to watch the, the alternatives out there. Now, the alternatives are not much better. I'm not going to lie. AEW started off good and then it got dumb and then TNA hasn't drew a fucking dime in over a decade so that should tell you something right there excuse me impact wrestling that's one of the things that they fucked up on changing their name from TNA which was cool total nonstop action even though that's not what Vince Russo made it up as cuz you know oh yeah bro bro TNA get it bro tits and ass bro 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 that's a whole nother video for another day <laughs> But fuck John Cena. I mean, I could sit here all day and go through his entire match history. Guess, spoiler alert, they're the same match. But people got tired of it, you know. Dun, 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 dun. And then, oh, look, my belt spins. Isn't it cool, guys? Because I'm a fucking a white guy that thinks I'm black. Which, again, they already had characters like that. They just didn't work. And then I never lose a match, guys. And then they wanted, yeah, then they wanted him to be, you know, Mr. Fucking Clean. Because they changed, you know, his his name, the STFU, to the Attitude Adjustment. And all that. Shut the fuck up, dude. Like, come on. Who do you, you act like people ain't never watch an episode of Monday Night Raw. Get the fuck out of here. Who are you trying to bullshit? Fucking Vince McMahon and WWE, they can all kiss my ass. In the words of Shane Douglas from ECW. Yeah, then they made him fucking Super Cena. 
And then now he wants to be a movie star and, you know, he's a, I don't use this word often because everyone uses it, but he's a fucking cuck for China. Yeah, Taiwan's a country. And then, no, Taiwan, no country. Taiwan, part of China. And I know people are like, oh, that's fucked up. No, I'm making fun of John Cena because he tried to do a half-assed apology in Mandarin. And I don't speak Mandarin, but his fucking Mandarin was horrible. I'm making fun of John Cena. I'm not making fun of Chinese people. But fuck John Cena. And the second part was, you know, why did his why did he contribute in the long run to WWE's decline? Because again, you know, after the attitude okay, after the attitude era, people people forget. People think that the attitude era was the only time in wrestling. They think it's the best era of wrestling. It's not. You go back. And you watch a lot of these pay-per-views and a lot of these Raws and SmackDowns, and they're not that fucking good, okay? I don't know why people put the goggles on. Well, I know why they do it, because nostalgia, guys. They're not that good. Especially a lot of the Raws where every fucking match ended in a disqualification. That's not what people want to see. And then, you know, nine, nine, nine minutes of, of fucking promos to start the show, and then another 20 minutes throughout the show's of promos. I'm Triple H, and I'm going to stand in the ring for 20 minutes and talk about how great I am. And that's segment one. And then we go to a commercial. And then a lot of those paper, again, me and my brother, you know, been watching these pay-per-views, and a lot of them aren't that good. There's like three matches that are good, and the rest are fucking popcorn matches. We just watched Survivor Series 2005, and it was okay. The The Survivor Series match was good. The title match was okay, because Kurt Angle was in there. You know, the last man standing match between Flair and Triple H was all right. But the rest of the pay-per-view was not that good. But I think, you know, again, the Attitude Era ended. People were getting out of wrestling. They were trying to still hold on to some of that. Because in that era, from like 2002 to 2006, SmackDown was pretty fucking good. Because you actually, SmackDown had the better roster. It had more people that actually knew how to fucking wrestle. And they took it more seriously on SmackDown. Raw was like, okay, this is the dog and pony show. But SmackDown took it seriously. But when, you know, all your big stars leave, Stone Cold, The Rock, even Brock Lesnar. Because Brock Lesnar was only there for two years. Again, people tend to forget that. When Brock Lesnar first came on, he was only there from right after WrestleMania 18 to WrestleMania 20. He was there for less than two years. And then he said, I want to go play football. That didn't work. And then he tried to be an MMA fighter, and the results varied. And then he came back, and then Vince does whatever for him because it's Brock Lesnar. What a surprise. Anyway. So, you know, they were in a pickle because WCW went out of business. And they bought it. What a surprise. WCW, you know, should have ended sooner. But, you know, that's another video for another day. ECW went bankrupt, which doesn't make any fucking sense. Because 2000, their last full year in operation, was their highest grossing year ever. Money like that just doesn't fucking disappear. But anyway, that's another video for another day. TNA was never, ever going to compete with WWE. I don't know why some people thought that. It was never going to compete with WWE. It's impossible. They tried it, and they failed fucking miserably when they tried to go head-to-head. -head. AEW is trying to do the same thing. Okay, well, we can compete. You cannot compete with Vince McMahon. It's just the way that it goes. And Ring of Honor ain't in no way fucking shape or form was ever going to compete with WWE. But again, these are other videos for other days. So... You have to create stars. People got, you know, all you had really after the Monday Night Wars was trip after Attitude Era was Triple H, and people got tired of it. You know, what about Undertaker? At that point, Undertaker was getting older. Undertaker started to wrestle less. I mean, he was still there, but he was more of kind of like, okay, I'm the veteran, and I'll do what I got to do, but it's kind of other people's time. 
So Undertaker backed off a little bit. You know, Shawn Michaels, when he came back, it was kind of the same thing. But you had plenty of other people. You had Edge and Chris Jericho and Christian and all the great Canadian wrestlers that, oh, well, they're just, they're mid-carders. They're mid-carders. Or like I said in the WrestleMania 20 commentary, I think Vince had a fuck, had such a fucking hard on for Brett after the screw job that, well, Canadian wrestlers can't do anything. Because it took a long time for any of those guys to actually do something that was fucking worth a shit in the company. But again, these are other videos for other days. <laughs> But I think that one of the biggest reasons why people got away from it and people gave the fuck up on wrestling is because of John Cena. People knew what it was. Okay, it's paper thin. He's some fucking wannabe rapper, white bitch. And he's never going to fucking lose. And he's never going to lose a title. The only way he loses a title, if he, if he gets hurt or in the storyline, he loses it. And people didn't give a shit about it. People saw right the fuck through it. Like Casper. And people got tired of it. And people just cared less and less and less. And they stopped watching the product. Because they didn't want to see John Cena come out and wrestle whoever. And you already fucking knew he was going to win. The idea of wrestling is to create an illusion that. Two people are going to kill each other, and one of them is going to live, and there has to be a threat or a danger there. Wrestling has not had that in a long time. Prove me fucking wrong. You thought that Shawn Michaels and Bret Hart were going to kill each other because they hated each other in real life. You thought that Ric Flair was going to kill his opponents. You don't have that anymore. And John Cena is about as believable as a fucking $3 bill. But they didn't have anybody. And they tried to, you know, start to gear towards a different audience. And then they went PG. But in the words of Mark Henry, what is PG about violence? Exactly, Mark. <laughs> Even though it's not really violence. But you guys get, you get the point. You understand the point I'm trying to make. And then also, you know, at the time, the people that loved the Attitude Era were getting older and they went more towards UFC. That's another big thing. You have to compete with UFC because that's about the time that the Attitude Era was ending, you know, 2002, well, no, a little bit late, a little bit later, you know, 04, 05, that's when UFC went on spike and went bigger and people, you know, re that really blew up because before that UFC was really like a cult thing. It was really popular amongst martial artists and, and combat sports and, and aficionados, but UFC didn't really blow up until the ultimate fighter. And then everyone's like, Oh, well, this is cool. Let's go get a tap out shirt guys. And people got away from that. Again, the, the, the kids 10, 11, 12, with the Attitude Era started, they were now 16, 17, 18 and older, and they didn't want to watch it anymore. And they definitely didn't want to watch fucking John Cena. So, I mean, UFC, a lot of people don't want to admit that, but the UFC blowing up really big in like 04, 05, whenever they did, it's in the back. Um, I have the first season of Ultimate Fighter. Actually, I think I have like the first three seasons of the Ultimate Fighter, but anyway. When that blew up, that killed it too. But people just didn't give a fuck about Cena. People saw right through it. They're like, all right, here we go. Here's another fucking cardboard cutout baby face that's never going to lose a goddamn match, never going to lose a fucking title, and they expect people to like it. And that's, it, it, again, prove me wrong. Prove me wrong about John Cena. Everything I've said in the past 34 minutes, prove me wrong. And I think that he was more detrimental to WWE than he was, you know, helpful to WWE. Because it's like, okay, we saw this with Hogan. We saw this with other people. We don't like this anymore. Stop it. And the whole thing where he was possibly going to break Ric Flair's record of 16 world championships. They're tied, by the way. But possibly him winning a 17th and being the most you know, uh, wrestler with the world champion. It, it is fucking embarrassing. 
it is insulting, in my opinion, in my humble opinion, it is insulting to any serious wrestling fan that John Cena would break fucking Ric Flair's record. Now I get it. It's not real. It's not a real belt. And well, whatever. Um, that's another video for another day. But even just, you know, entertaining the notion that, yeah, you know what? I think John Cena should be the most decorated world champion in professional wrestling is fuck is a fucking joke. Again, it is insulting and it is an embarrassment to even remotely think that this is the guy that should break Flair's record. Now, technically, Ric Flair is actually a more than 16-time world champion because a lot of those tours that they would do back in the day especially in Puerto Rico and Japan, Flair actually lost the belt and then won it back, but they didn't count it. So, yeah. So I shouldn't really be that upset about it, I guess. But technically, Flair is more than 16-time world champion. And if you don't believe me, this is all, all... You can find it on the internet. It's on Wikipedia. It's out there. Flair is, I think, technically like a 23-time world champion if you count all the times... You know, that didn't count, even though it really did, because he still lost the belt. <laughs> so technically he is the most decorated, and he will be. But again, just, you know, out of all the people, you know, Stone Cold, Shawn Michaels, Bret Hart, The Rock. No, nope, fucking Cena. Yeah, Cena should break should totally break that record. Fuck that. Fuck that. Fuck Cena. But... You know, to kind of put a bow on this and wrap this up, I went on far too long. You know, I apologize. But I was never a fan of him as a wrestler, apart from the early stuff of the Doctor of Thugonomics. After that, I didn't give a fuck. Them just making him Super Cena and fucking Fruity Pebbles and we got to sell ice cream and, you know, cereal boxes and toys. It, it hurt WWE more than it helped WWE because people didn't want to see that. And they booked him horribly because he never lost the match. He buried pretty much everybody that he worked with, which is why nobody likes him. I mean, honestly, where are these where are these interviews where all his opponents said, yeah, you know, John was great to work with in the ring. He's a professional. Where are you? There are none. Because I have never heard any of his fucking opponents ever put him over or talk about him. Shawn Michaels? No. Triple H? Hell no. Where are these interviews? I've never seen a, a video clip or read a printed interview where anyone praises John Cena as one of their greatest opponents. Because it never fucking happened, brother. But they booked him like shit, and, and they, they had opportunities to do something different, but they fucked it up. What a surprise. And yes, I think he was more hurtful to WWE than he was helpful because people saw right through it like goddamn Casper. They knew that this was just, you know, in one ear, out the other, another popcorn fucking wrestler that's just out here to sell t-shirts like fucking Hogan. And people turned the show off. They gravitate. They gravitated towards UFC because... By the time he was the champion, UFC blew up really big. People, the, the Attitude Era fan base was gone, whether they were adults or they were teenagers and they were getting older and they were getting into different things. I mean, our, my cousin, one of my cousins, he's only three years older than me and he was a fucking WrestleManiac. All he did was watch wrestling. And when the Attitude Era ended, he stopped w watching it. He watched it a little bit when it was over, like the ruthless aggression. But by the time that Cena came on the scene as the as the champion, he gave up. So you know, people can say I'm I'm talking out of my ass. No, it's true. In the words of Kurt Angle, it's damn true. I love Kurt Angle. You guys know this. But whatever, whatever. So yeah, fuck him. You know, he kind of helped fuck WWE up, and they didn't know how to book him because they just said, Super Cena, Super Cena, Super Cena. He can't lose. He can't lose to Shawn Michaels. That's that's beneath him. He can't lose to Edge. That's beneath him. That's always irked me, the whole Edge thing. And again, I don't think Edge likes him because I've never heard a single fucking interview anywhere 
where Edge talks about how good Cena was. I think he's still pissed off about that. I'd be pissed off too. But whatever. So anyway, um, thank you. Let me pull this uh, this back up here because I'm gonna. Uh, I forgot. I'm gonna butcher the name. Clarson. I was like, no, nah, it is Clarson. So, Clarson. Thank you. I appreciate the paid request. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. Um, I do like the wrestling ones because I don't really get to talk about wrestling um, unless it's on a live stream. But um, speaking of that, just got another paid request. <laughs> They've been listening to me. They finally took all this time. It only took 30 years. But people are actually listening to me. <laughs> but anyway, guys, I hope that you enjoyed the video. I don't normally do this, but I love to hear your comments bitching about John Cena. I know we do it on the streams and stuff. You know, let me know how you guys feel. I love it. I really do. When we shit on Cena, it's fucking awesome. Um, take care. Uh, we're going to get back into the VHS stuff. I know you guys have been looking forward to it. I know you've been enjoying them. So we got more of those coming, and we'll talk soon. Later.